Thanks for joining us for another tabletop review. We've got the SIG P365XL coming up next on GB Guns. So opening this guy up in its cute little case, same small case as the 365 itself. See we've got one mag in, an additional 12 round mag sitting beside it. Came with the chamber flag. Uh, you get some information about Spec 1, which is uh, this premium blend lubricant, although they only want you to try it once. These non-resealable samples kind of get messy. Uh, more about 365 products, a sticker, registration, and the manual is all rather dark renderings, but is uh, set to include all of the 365 series. Let's get that out of the way and take a look at the gun. So I've zoomed in, of course, for this little guy. First things first, we'll show clear. Magazine does kick out fairly well. And we can see we've got an empty chamber. We do have a witness window there up top. Some of you might be wondering, but Graham, how does it compare with the regular 365 size-wise? And I would have a couple things to tell you. One, don't call me butt, Graham. And two, we've got uh, the 365 SAS right here for comparisons. I'm sure you've already seen a ton of these out there, but now you're gonna see it again. We can see the SAS has a rounded trigger, whereas the XL has a flat face trigger. And width-wise, of course, it's the same. You're getting a little more barrel, which should equal more velocity. How much? Hopefully, we'll be able to tell you if the weather lets us bring out the chrono. And uh, the grip is a little bit different, just different enough so that magazines are not interchangeable. Your standard 10-rounder is not quite long enough. You can put the XL mag into, of course, the XL, but not... Uh, the SAS is going to be sticking out a little bit there. You might also be wondering how would this compare with, say, the 15 round magazine inside of the 365 SAS. This gives me a full grip with room to spare. This with the flush fit mag gives me a two and a half finger grip, almost three finger, almost a whole hand grip. And that is why I took to liking this guy when I got my opportunity to shoot it. The, uh, the regular SAS, or regular 365, is just a little on the small side for me. Uh, I find that I err left when shooting it, uh, not because of the sights, but because I end up squeezing, because it just feels too small for my hands. That happens with some people, but not everyone. Back to looking at the gun as we always do. Starting at the front, we do have a lot of slide to frame play. Like the this frame up front, the dust cover doesn't have much reinforcement to it. Also, I wanna put it out there while you guys are looking down the barrel, that I am not looking down the barrel. I do not film with my eyeballs. I film with a camera at a 90 degree angle and I look into the camera off of a screen. That's part of my challenges in doing this, but it also means I'm not pointing a gun at myself. Barrel to slide, lockup is good up tight up front. No wiggle at the chamber either. You can see we have some serrations for a press check. It is, and I've told so many people this, when you have a shorter barrel firing the same caliber as a bigger gun, you need a stiffer spring. This spring is a bit on the stiff side, so you do need to really grab if you wanted to press check up front there. I would suggest doing the slingshot method for something like this. We do have a rail, however, it is unique to SIG, not a standard rail. Nice relief here under the trigger guard. You can see how highly it's cut. That allows big fat fingers like mine to get underneath it, even though it's a relatively small gun. Magazine release does protrude a little bit from the body of the frame. Is it going to get bumped while shooting? Time will tell. I don't think so. The slide lock and release is easily within reach, and it does function as a release. It sticks out 
which you know on the SAS they made it flush and so the, this has to be slingshot whereas this you can actually still reach there. Trigger is flat. Flat triggers tend to feel better because as your finger slides down to the bottom you gain more leverage. Have some creep. I'll show you. Breaks right about at the wall. A little bit of over travel as you'd want. Reset was tactile and audible. Creeps back again, then breaks. So not a target trigger, but this is not a target gun. It's a defense gun. We've got this nice aggressive texturing that is not going to rip up your skin, but definitely still provides texture. My hands are greasy from just having done an AK that was fresh out of the box. And I can grab this gun still. Slide to frame, we have wiggle on the back, just as we did on the front. That could impact accuracy. We'll find out. That nice bright front sight post really draws your attention and you've got plenty of daylight on the sides of the front sight post. And no controls over here on the other side. The magazine well does have a little bit of swell to it. So that pops out. That aids not so much in feeding the magazine in as it does, at least for me, in keeping my hand out of the way so the magazine can actually drop free. It's a challenge I have having big hands that see right there, magazine stopped on the pad of my hand. Things like that would be frustrating in competition or at a defensive shooting school as a carry gun. Not so worried about it because, and I could be wrong, but the way I see it, if I ever have to reload in a defensive shooting, I wasn't going to win anyways, or something has gone terribly, terribly wrong. Next, we'll field strip this guy and take a look inside the gun. So to field strip the 365 XL, we're of course going to check for clear one more time, locking the slide to the rear, which does that anyways for us. And with the slide to the rear pushing down on this lever until it stops, let the slide go forward and you don't have to pull the trigger, which is pretty cool. Taking a look at our frame construction, you can see we've got that internal chassis system that has become so popular. Very neat and clean construction. Not a lot of excess, which is part of what helps keep this thing so light. To get our barrel out, we're gonna remove the recoil assembly. You can see it's color-coded. I'm sure they have different colors for maybe different load usage. Uh, the oil does seem to be eating away <laughs> and removing that paint. So I might have yellow fingers. Pop up on the barrel to bring it forward, then out. Take a look inside of our slide here. Minimal machining mark as one would expect from a relatively late production gun. Rather new still on the market. And in the top here, you see those two holes. That is where you stick your Allen key to remove those screws and remove this plate to be able to mount one of the really small red, side, uh, red dots. The Romeo, I think it's called Zero One, is what uh, SIG has made to fit this for a nice small red dot. I believe there are others that fit. I'm sure some of you can comment and let us know which ones do. Our barrel has a very nice coating. Good rich color. Rather thin, but that's modern manufacturing. And uh, the feed ramps, not exactly big. So it'll be interesting to see when we get to our what's for dinner test to see what'll feed and what won't. To check for chamber support, we're gonna use our Nosler match as always. We use this because it is quite frankly the most consistent ammunition that I've experienced thus far. Drop that in there and chamber support is how much of the chamber is actually supporting around the brass. We can see right underneath here, a little bit, just a tiny bit is not supported. It's not a big deal. It's only a big deal for those who want to run very high pressure loads or reloads. Sometimes it can be an issue with uh, faulty brass. Anyways, worst case scenario, if the brass comes apart or the casing, the shell, if you will, it's gonna blow out that way before it blows out that way. Generally, that means that everything gets dumped right down the magazine well and you end up scared with a destroyed magazine, maybe a destroyed gun, but it's safe. But anyways, that shows you the fitment. 
In fact, put that in there and a mag in if it lets us put a magazine in while stripped. And it does not. That's interesting. I'm sure I'm doing something wrong that someone can laugh at and point out to me, but uh, that mag does not want to go in. I wanted to look at the angle that it was going to be feeding the rounds from, but uh, huh. I mean, there's nothing in there. Interesting. We'll get the gun back together and see what, uh, what comes of it. So, uh, as I was talking about with the what's for dinner test, we'll test multiple different loads through this gun. Lock the slide to the rear, and you notice this rotated up automatically for me. May not always do that, but you want to bring that lever up. Let the slide go forward, quick functions check, and it's functioning. And the magazine goes in. Interesting. Can't put a mag in with the slide off. Wonder why. If any of you know that, please let me know in the comments below. I don't ex I don't pretend to be an expert on all things I haven't fired yet. So uh, anyways, when we uh, go out to the range with what's for dinner, we'll try a bunch of different loads, keeping them hopefully defensively oriented, but try different weights. I also want to try to see what we uh, get velocity difference wise through this slightly longer barrel. And if the 15 rounder in the regular is more or less comfortable than having the full hand of the XL. I can tell you for me, that extended piece of the back strap, being able to grip on the hand is a lot more comfortable than having the dangle and fold go on here. Whether or not that matters under the recoil of shooting, we'll have to wait till we get out to the range to try it. Let me know what your thoughts are if you've tried one of these or have a preference between the two and uh, we'll see you out on the range soon. Thanks for watching.